The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Jim Edwards came to politics in the 1960s while he was an oral surgeon in private practice in Charleston. I'd read the paper in the mornings and read the headlines and you know, throw the paper on the floor and say, why doesn't somebody do something? And finally one day I, when I did that, I stopped and started thinking, why should I expect somebody else to do something when I haven't done anything myself? Edwards went on to become the chairman of the Charleston County Republican Party. In the early 1970s, he was elected to the South Carolina Senate. A couple of years later, he emerged on the statewide scene. The 1974 governor's race was unlike any other in the state's history. It was a time when South Carolina was controlled by the Democratic Party, and few Republicans held public office. Jim Edwards, running for governor, I want to ask you to vote for me. We didn't have that many voters. We had, what I forgot how many thousand voters in the primary, 35, 40,000 voters. And that was the first Republican primary ever. And I had been working in the vineyard. I knew all the Republicans, and they knew me. And, uh, and they were upset at Westmoreland's, you know, he was talking about running to the Democrat, but then he switched to the Republican at the last minute. And so the whole thing, with the stage was set for, for this, but I didn't realize it at the time. And when, uh, when, I, when we won the thing, I was as shocked as anyone. It is great to, to win. I've won and we've lost, and it's a lot more fun to win than it is to lose. <laughs> His election, I think, was almost completely uh, by accident. Uh, interestingly, I had made the statement to somebody earlier, uh, a number of years before, that the first Republican to be elected governor of South Carolina was going to have to be an accident, because I don't believe it'll happen any other way. Now, of course, I, I don't mean that I foresaw what happened. I don't think anybody could have foreseen uh, what happened in 1974. For the first time in a century, a Republican governor stood on the steps of the state capitol and took the oath of office. While he may have been a surprise governor, Edwards fully understood his place in history and his responsibility. It is with complete humility that I come before you today as the 86th governor of a proud South Carolina. He took over at a very tough time. I mean, the, the economy was terrible. There was a great debt, state debt, and he was determined to do something about that. And I think he has, you know, he had a number of successes, but I think he, uh, re when he reflected back, as I recall on his, his history of the, the four years in the governor's office, the fact that they managed to have a reserve fund established, which was terribly important, uh, and that it became a constitutional mandate. Uh, was terribly important that, that kept the, the AAA credit rating, that they did a lot of things to, to secure the state financially. I think he was rightly very proud of that. Edwards came to office with an overwhelmingly Democratic controlled legislature. Even his lieutenant governor was a Democrat. His time in the Senate had helped him get to know some of them, but there was still an uneasiness in the air. If he was going to succeed, it would depend on his ability to get along with the legislature. Edwards is a unique guy. Um, he has probably the best people skills of anybody that I've ever seen. He reached across the aisle to um, Rembrandt Dennis and Marion Gressett. Um, they talk now about reaching across the aisle. Edwards was the master at that. Just over the years, uh, we just grew to admire and respect each other. Uh, though uh, his politics were right, uh, may even be far right of center, and my politics at one time was pretty far right left uh, of center, uh, I think we kind of met uh, somewhere uh, in the center, uh, and we have been friends ever since. He was a good face for South Carolina when he was governor. A good part of the governor's job in South Carolina is representing the state. He represented the state well and with honor and with integrity. You know, a lot of people talk about partisanship, and I think you ought to be partisan in any campaign you're in. But 
once you're elected, I think you ought to put partisan politics aside and everybody work together for the good of whatever the entity they're, they're elected to, either the House or the Senate or the, you know, the U.S. House or the Congress or whatever it is, they ought to, ought to set partisanship aside once they're elected and then come the next election, they can become partisan again and, and tell the differences between the two parties. But politics was never a personal thing with me. It was always a philosophical thing, and I, I never, I hope I never allowed it to become personal. You know, one of the things that, that occurred during his administration that has, has had long-lasting effect on the state of South Carolina, that's the Education Finance Act. That was passed while Jim Edwards was governor and was passed because of his efforts. And that, as you know, established the foundation for the way we financed education across this state and was the first step towards equalization and the giving of the same education uh, all across the state of South Carolina. Now, we're not there yet, but this was the first major step that took us out of the antiquated times into modern times, and I give Jim Edwards credit for that. Edwards left the governor's office in 1979 anxious to get back to Charleston and oral surgery. In his four years as governor, he had changed how the state was managed. He had begun work on equalizing education funding, setting aside a reserve fund, and revamping several state agencies. And he had helped the Republican Party gain acceptance in South Carolina. Edwards' return to Charleston did not last long. Within two years, his old friend, President Ronald Reagan, summoned him to Washington. Edwards was appointed Secretary of Energy and charged with dismantling the agency. He found his two years in Washington were far more difficult than his time in Columbia. In his time as Secretary of Energy, Edwards brought substantial changes to the nation's energy policies. He succeeded in deregulating oil, which let the free market work and cut long lines at the pumps. While Edwards did not end up dismantling the Department of Energy, he did cut the agency's budget from $17 billion to $11 billion. Edwards strongly believed that nuclear-generated electricity was safe, clean, and cheap, and he pushed for the development of nuclear energy. After two years in Washington, Charleston called him home to become the president of the Medical University of South Carolina. For the next 17 years, he transformed the university, growing its campus and resources. Edwards retired from the Medical University in 1999. It brought an end to a life of public service that spanned nearly three decades. 